This is John Grunsfeld's world. He's in charge of NASA's science mission, and the Goddard Space Flight Center is a place he knows well. How's it going? I think the best job in the solar system is being an astronaut. Since I can't go to space anymore, the best job on Earth is probably being the head of NASA science. In fact, he was a legendary astronaut, known as the Hubble Repairman for his three trips to fix the Hubble Space Telescope, the most important scientific instrument in history. Now, he's taken on an even bigger challenge. This is where we put the things together that are actually the missions that go into deep space. Uh, this is the multi-spheric, multi-scale mission. It's actually four satellites, one mission, four satellites. They're big, they're complex. The other is they're just expensive. That's about a billion dollars of hardware right there. This is what NASA calls the Chamber of Horrors, where they simulate the rigors of space travel. We are working on a space station project called the Ammonia Leak Locator. Ah, cool. Yep, so. I've heard about that. Inside these chambers, they can suck out all the air and cycle the temperature from boiling to hundreds of degrees below freezing. It's discovered down there? Yeah. Yeah, they're getting ready to they're go start flying. You want to go take a look? Yeah. From small yep. scientific instruments to an That's entire great. spacecraft, great. everything comes to this building yep. for final testing before it can be sent into space. So when do you think they'll turn it on? Probably not until late. We still have some fine tuning to do. It's going to be single axis or? All three. All three. Good seeing you, Gavin. Good seeing you. I always wanted to be an astronaut. When I was growing up on the south side of Chicago, as the Apollo program was in full swing and the Gemini flights were flying, so I told my mom I wanted to be an astronaut, and she thought that was great because I would probably learn lots of science and math, and there was no chance I would ever actually become an astronaut. She was wrong about that, but he did learn a lot about science and math, and went on to get a PhD in experimental physics from the University of Chicago. I went on to Caltech to work in a group doing balloon payloads, rocket payloads, satellites, going up to observatories, just having an extraordinary, exciting time. I couldn't imagine a better job until a better job came along. Grunsfeld's childhood dream came true when he applied and was selected to become an astronaut. When I went into space the first time, it was 1995, what I didn't expect is how much I would love it. It's a completely magical experience. I got to orbit, and truly for the first time in my life, I felt like I was at home. Spaceflight is extraordinarily addictive. I would live in space if I could. But instead of living in space on the International Space Station, by a twist of fate, he was selected to go on a mission to fix the ill-fated Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope is an observatory in space. It's a satellite, it's a man-made machine. Yet, partly because of its incredible story and partly because of the amazing science it's produced, it almost has a life of its own, a personality. Hubble had been one of NASA's biggest disasters, a hugely expensive telescope that could not focus correctly. And like the Westerns of the old days, you know, the astronauts rode to the rescue you know, with their white suits, women and men, going out doing spacewalks instead of white hats, and they managed to fix the telescope. Grunsfeld flew on three out of the five Hubble servicing missions, and his career became closely linked to the fate of the telescope. It was a risky business, because out in space, one mistake could be fatal. Loving science and putting my life at risk, you know, are just part of what I do. Hubble went from being the trouble child of the space program to changing our whole idea of the cosmos. And Grunsfeld had the distinction of being the last person to ever touch the Hubble Space Telescope out in space. And to my great surprise, in that moment when I gave Hubble one last little pat and a salute, I wasn't sad at all. I felt really happy that we were sending Hubble off in the best shape of its entire career. Hubble is still out there, sending back its amazing images of the universe. But John Grunsfeld is back on Earth, directing the effort to build its successor, the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope is going to go where no Hubble has gone before, because it's going to go a million miles from Earth rather than around Earth orbit and view an infrared light so that it can see the very first stars and galaxies in the universe. James Webb Space Telescope might help us get closer to answering that question. 
He says he has the second greatest job in the solar system, after being an astronaut, of course. But it almost didn't happen that way because the head of science for NASA and one of the most famous astronauts in history actually was not selected to be an astronaut the first time he applied. But he tried again two years later and got in. Applying twice was very important. There's some astronauts who have flown in space who applied four or five times. So persistence is definitely a part of, of being successful in life, but also being successful as an astronaut. <laughs>